Caribbean to build themselves into the most powerful nation on earth, they have left the Caribbean peoples illiterate and unhealthy. Which means that the governments today now have to clean up illiteracy and clean up the ill health. Do not have the resources to do it. I like to use Jamaica as an example. After 300 years, the British left Jamaica with 80% of its people illiterate. When Jamaica went into independence, when Jamaica went into independence in 1962, 80% of the people were functionally illiterate. And then you say to Jamaica, with their two million people, go and develop. There is no nation on this planet using any method of economic development that could transform a society with 80% illiteracy into a developed nation in 50 years. It is impossible. Because from the illiteracy springs a whole range of other conditions. From the illiteracy springs a whole range of other conditions that undermine the best thrust for development. You have to deal first with removing illiteracy. Then you have to move to deal with health because health and illiteracy are linked. We now have in the Caribbean an explosion of chronic diseases. We have 60% of the black people in the Caribbean over the age of 60, have hypertension or diabetes, or both. Now, if you take the single criterion of chronic diseases, hypertension, high blood pressure, that type 2 diabetes, if you take that simple criterion, the black people in the Caribbean are the unhealthiest people on the planet. And you have to understand that. On the one hand, we are watching Usain Bolt and we are watching the Caribbean athletes. We are watching the Caribbean with an image of being the most athletic people on the planet. But beneath that image of these super sportsmen and women is the hard reality that we are now the sickest people on the planet. In every black family in the Caribbean, hypertension and diabetes is endemic and congenital. In my family, almost everybody over 60 has hypertension and diabetes. And it's the same for your families, for all of our families. There is an explosion of ill health in the Caribbean. And this is a legacy of slavery and colonization. You take, you take a people, put them on an island for 300 years, give them salt fish and salt pork every day, overwork them, undermine them sell their children, rape their wives, make them work 20 hours a day, overwork, malnourish, and take them through that stress, that stress profile of physical and mental terror. What you get? Hypertension and diabetes. It was the same then as it is now. When your doctor tells you to learn to relax, to learn to relax, take out your salt. Well, you can take out the salt but your four parents couldn't take it because that's all they had, salt. And now the result is that black people in the Caribbean cannot metabolize salt and sugar. Because for 300 years, that is what you were fed on plantations, plus the stress. So we cannot metabolize salt and sugar, and now we all have a salt and sugar problem, hypertension, diabetes. And we are spending millions of dollars to deal with this. Millions of dollars we are spending to fight hypertension and diabetes in the Caribbean that is going to be the number one economic crisis in this region next 20 years unless we find an answer to it. At the University of the West Indies, we've started to do this research. And I can share with you the problem that we're having. The drugs that are being used to treat high blood pressure, for example, have been clinically tried on Caucasian peoples because they are the majority in the markets. The drugs are 95% efficient on a Caucasian body because when you take a hypertension drug, what happens, the drug goes into your body, it sends a message to your cells to open up, to open up, let the blood come through. It sends a message, okay. When a white person takes that drug, the cells have a 90% response. 
When an African black person in the Caribbean takes that drug, we have a 70% response. So we are still dying at a faster rate. When you see people in the 60s and 70s having strokes and heart attacks because of hypertension, it is because the drugs are not working. They're not working as well as they should. Now, the important thing about this is that the drugs work on the Africans. The drugs work on the Africans as well as they work on the Caucasians. But they don't work on us because something happened to us. You see, so when an African in Nigeria and Ghana and so on takes the drugs, he has, she has a good response. When the European take it, they have a good response. But in the Caribbean and in the New World, the Africans over here don't have that response because something happened to us. Because we have been genetically modified during that slavery period. It doesn't work on us. And now we have to find out. So right now we are taking, we are taking blood samples. We are taking blood samples from people in Nigeria and Ghana and comparing blood samples with Barbados, Jamaica, St. Vincent and trying to find out what the differences are so that we can figure out why the cells of black people in the Caribbean don't respond the same way to, as Africans do. What has happened to us in the process? The stress profile of slavery for the three to four hundred years. And believe me, we have lost some very good people in the Caribbean over the years from heart attacks as a result of hypertension. People who really should be living longer. But let's say there are five or six drugs that we are using for hypertension. We've tried them. We've had individuals in our university community and we have moved them from one drug, it worked for a year, to the next, it worked for a year, to the next. And we've gone through all the drugs, and eventually the body starts reacting, and we're getting people dying of heart attacks. That should be alive. So slavery was not just killing you in the slavery period. 150 years later, slavery is still killing us at a faster rate. So when people say to you, slavery is over, it's in the past, you are now in the jet stream of it we are now experiencing the medical consequences of it. And that is devastating our governments and our economies and our families. Each time one of my great colleagues die of hypertension heart attacks, I shudder. Because I know that had that person been white, they would be alive because the drugs would have worked better for them. But we do not have the resources to do this work. We have approached the pharmaceutical companies and they have said to us, the black people in the Caribbean are only 5% of the world's population. This research requires millions of research dollars to have the drugs adjusted through biochemical research so that when the black person from the Caribbean takes it, they get the same response as anybody else. But it requires a lot of biochemical research. And we have started.